Human beings have a habit of building big. Just a casual look through history will show you that whenever humans have developed, we've preferred to go big. The pyramids of Giza and Mexico are a prime example. Then you've got the Easter Island statues and Stonehenge, just to name a few. But is bigger always better? In the last century, scientists have shown us that going small can also have its benefits. Look at the evolution of computers, for instance. The first computer developed by IBM, the Howard Mark I, was over 50 feet long and weighed over 5 tons. Today, phones that fit in the palm of our hand have greater computing power than the first computer ever made. The reduction in the size of transistors has allowed us to build smaller and smaller computers and smart devices. If we look back just three decades ago, you'll probably remember that we used to have big, bulky telephones that we couldn't take anywhere. The Internet was a new concept and life was very different. Three decades later, we've got smartphones, 24-7 connectivity, and a completely changed lifestyle, all thanks to how successfully we've managed to miniaturize technology. We're now at the cusp of yet another revolution that will completely change the way we live in the next two to three decades. This change is going to be a mixture of various ongoing revolutions, such as the fintech revolution, AI development, and nanotechnology, which is the topic we'll be covering in this video. The term nano was first introduced by Norio Taniguchi in 1972 to describe the science of assembling atoms into new forms, but back then it wasn't that widely known or understood. Nanotechnology is the science of engineering, material fabrication, and micro-scale patterning at the molecular and atomic levels. This nanotechnology involves the manipulation of matter at a scale smaller than 100 nanometers. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter, which is 10 times the diameter of a hydrogen atom. To put this in perspective, the diameter of a human hair is, on average, 80,000 nanometers. Making new things at such a small scale is called nanotechnology. At such scales, the ordinary rules of physics and chemistry no longer apply. To prevent this video from getting too complex, it will be easier to understand nanotechnology through the example of Ant-Man. If you've seen The Avengers, you'll know that every time Ant-Man shrunk himself, time became relative to him. Ant-Man, in his shrunken form, appeared to move faster than his normal-sized friends and enemies. Similarly, when he became bigger during the fight scene in Civil War, time kind of slowed down for him. His normal movements took too long, which allowed Spider-Man and Iron Man to bring him down easily. This is the same effect that makes it almost impossible to catch a fly. From the perspective of a fly, we literally move in slow motion. Now, if you keep going smaller from human size to ant size, and from ant size to the size of a molecule, and even further from molecular size to subatomic size, at each new level a new dimension will open where the laws of physics will not be the same to you as they were on the basic human size level. This is called the quantum realm in the simplest of terms. Nanotechnology, therefore, allows us to explore uncharted territory. The possibilities are endless because we're just beginning to understand what we can accomplish with this technology. Think of it like this. The basic unit of matter is the atom. Everything that we see and feel around us is made of atoms. You're made of atoms. The phone that you have in your hand, the couch you're maybe sitting on, or the car that you drive, everything is made of atoms. Even the air we breathe and the water we drink is made of atoms. So the question is, if everything's made of atoms, why do we then have different forms, shapes, objects, and colors? Well, it turns out that the way in which atoms are arranged determines how anything appears and functions. This is similar to a Lego. You can use Lego blocks to build anything. The same Lego block can be used to make a car or a building. Similarly, atoms can be used to make anything, but once they join together to form a certain shape, they then take the physical and chemical properties of that object. Let's look at another example to make this even more interesting. The human body has numerous elements in it. Our blood has iron, which is very important for strength. We have zinc in our bodies, which is needed for the immune system. We even have traces of gold, silver, and copper in our blood. All of these minerals and elements are needed for the body to function properly. But the question is, where did this iron come from? Iron's not naturally found on Earth. Every last bit of iron present on Earth 
once came from the core of a star, and stars only make iron when they're about to die out. Similarly, there's no way to make gold naturally. Gold in the entire universe is only created when two neutron stars, or a neutron star and a black hole, collide and merge. This explosion is called a kilonova, and it's the only place in the universe where gold and heavier elements can be created. The gold in our bloodstream was once a part of some kilonova billions of years ago. So the same atom that was once inside a dying star is now inside our bodies, giving us life and strength. This whole explanation shows us that atoms can be rearranged to take different forms and fulfill different functions. The ability to manipulate atoms in this manner is what we call nanotechnology. The term nanotechnology gained traction around the late 80s with the publication of Eric Drexler's book, The Coming Era of Nanotechnology. In this book, Eric Drexler discussed nanotechnology at length and proposed a nanoscale assembler a type of device that can use available raw material to build a replica of anything. To understand this concept, think of a 3D printer that can print anything if you have the right raw materials. The idea is quite common in games like Prey, where you can recycle objects, break them down into atoms, and then fabricate anything you want from the available atoms. The process of fabrication is not fictional, it's an actual process that's being used to create nanotechnology that is already a part of our daily lives. Nanotechnology has far-reaching applications in various fields, including the food, health, energy, agriculture, electronics, and environment. It's also used for medicinal purposes. The human body is full of nano-sized structures such as proteins, DNA, and cells. Nanotechnology offers promising results to improve their function and stability. Biomedicine is an important area for nanotechnology research. Nanotechnology can be used to create more effective medical treatments and medicines that target the affected area to increase the rate of healing and reduce the negative side effects and treatment. Several anti-cancer drugs, including heclitaxel, doxorubicin, 5-fluorouracil, and dexamethasone have been successfully formulated using nanomaterials. These drugs have been used for cancer treatment for over a decade now. More recently, nanotechnology came into the limelight when a team of researchers won the Nobel Prize for CRISPR, which is a nanotechnology-based gene editing methodology that allows scientists to cut and paste our genes for more effective treatment. This is the same technology that's being used in vaccines to fight against the deadly pandemic. Nanotechnology is also being used to develop cost-effective ways to generate sustainable energy. Kyoto University has developed a semiconductor through nanotechnology that can absorb twice the amount of sunlight to create more energy than conventional solar panels. Similarly, nanotechnology is being used to create lighter and cheaper materials for wind turbines. This is one key reason why the cost of creating sustainable energy is continuously coming down. Nanotechnology is also being used in fabrics to create next-generation waterproof clothing. Scholar Technologies is using a treatment called Nanosphere to coat fabrics with nanoparticles, making them not only waterproof but also dirt and dust-proof. Now that's a breakthrough I can get on board with. Another great example of nanotechnology being used in our lives is the food industry. Genetically modified seeds produce more and better quality crops. With increased nutrients. Genetically modified crops also don't need pesticides, so they end up reducing the cost of food to start with. Nanotechnology is also being used in the meat industry to mark meat with fluorescent nanoparticles that can indicate the presence of certain pathogens and bacteria. While nanotechnology has seemingly endless possibilities, it also has a few drawbacks and disadvantages that need to be carefully assessed. For instance, on one hand, genetically modified seeds have the solution to end global hunger and malnutrition, but on the other hand, there are also adverse health effects of some genetically modified food crops. Companies that excel in GMO food crops have been sued for potentially harmful effects on humans. CRISPR is another prime example of how unrelated nanotechnology can cause potential harm. He Jinkui, the Chinese researcher, conducted gene editing tests on human subjects without prior approval. 
He used gene editing on two twins with HIV-positive parents in an attempt to create children immune to the virus. Jankwe's attempt landed him in prison, stripping him of his titles and privileges. Eventually, the benefits of nanotechnology will push it towards increased acceptance in every field of life. Nanotechnology is already around us, but now it's going to morph into something that we've only seen in fiction. Imagine the possibilities if nanotechnology can be combined with robots and AI. Yes, we're talking about smart nanobots, which are still in their early developmental stage, but this is the future, guys. Not just nanotechnology, but smart nanobots. And that's a wrap. What did you think about nanotechnology? Are you excited to see how it will be used in the future? Let us know what you think in the comments down below and, like always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to our channel and stay up to date with all our latest releases. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.